From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. Hey, James, how are you today? I'm glad we're back for another exciting episode. Doing great, Steve. Always great to be back here talking about programming with our listeners. And how are you doing? Very well. I, uh, I'm, I'm excited. Um, we're, we're recording this uh, you know, only few, less than two weeks from Infocom, so a lot going on. Um, but uh, uh, the one of the shout outs that we had last year was to uh, continue to grow the AB programmer community. So I hope our listeners will stay tuned and we could talk a little bit about that at the end. A um, little teaser there. Um, for today, we, we have a, a, a um, familiar face if you are a somebody who is involved with Crestron and is a, a CSP. Um, he's the technical director of Crestron Service Providers, uh, and his name is Jeff Hopkins. Welcome, Jeff. Uh, well, thank you, Steve. Thank you, James. Glad to be here. We're glad to have you. We're we're uh, we're wanted to um, give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about your background in programming, your your AV journey, if you will. That's how we usually like to uh, have uh, our guests uh, set the stage, and then we'll we'll uh, take the conversation from there. No, absolutely. Um, you know, I think like most uh, AV programmers in the industry, um, you know, I woke up one morning and said, hey, this is exactly what I want to do. Um, no, absolutely not. That's not, not what happened. Um, you know, I, 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 as most people, I would say, um, uh, fell into the AV industry, um, by accident. Um, I, uh, had worked for an IT company, worked for a school district and was, uh, had the opportunity in college to do a co-op. Uh, so through my, uh, schooling, I got aligned with an IT company that actually happened to do AV. So uh, during my interview, uh, they started asking me gate logic and Boolean logic questions, of which I completely blanked on, had no idea what they were talking about, and in all reality, probably had one of the worst interviews I had ever had. However, um, the, the company, the gentleman, really looked at me in, as an opportunity to pull somebody in and, and give me gave me an opportunity to learn an industry that I didn't know. So... That's how I started my journey. I started installing from there, um, you know, about nine months, a year after I started, was doing install, I was asked if I wanted to start learning the programming side, specifically starting with Crestron. And, you know, one thing led to another. Six months later, I walked in and I had a set of blueprints on my desk saying, hey, here you go. This project's yours. Um, and to this day, I can remember exactly what it was. It was a C2N DB12 keypad with a QM, RM, CRX, BA, uh, amplifier, uh, quick media ceiling box with a uh, seven by two switcher. So um, it, it, it it just had the bug from that point on. Um, it was a unique opportunity to allow me to go into the programming side of what I enjoyed, um, but it did it in a way that wasn't sitting behind a desk just writing, you know, programming in C line code day after day after day. Um, as, as many programmers are well aware, there's no two days that are the same. And I, I thrived in that. And so uh, starting in about 2005, I went for my certification. I got certified in 2007. And, you know, the rest is history per se. Um, I, I, I've loved what I've done. I've spent almost 15, 16 years on the integration side. Um, and now uh, on a Throughout two different tours, I'm almost at six and a half years with Crestron um, as a technical director and a bunch of different verticals. And within this new role, it's exciting that I get to surround myself in the programming community and uh, really get to go deep into some conversations that I really wouldn't expect. So um, it's been a, it's been a fun journey, uh, I, and I, I made light of it at the beginning. Um, but everybody can attest, I think, in this industry, you don't wake up and go, hey, I'm going to be an AV control systems programmer today. Um, and this is going to be my career path. Uh, but it's also afforded me a lot of opportunities to go into some unique, unique situations. I think a lot of people can share in that. And I, I, before I bring James into the conversation, I do have a quick uh, humorous story about um, the the uh, Boolean logic. Um, when I worked at Crestron and maybe probably a lot of the listeners may not know this, but in, in the uh, early nineties, 
um, I was interviewed by none other than George Feldstein. And he gave me a test and said, design a divide by three counter with two JK flip-flops. And uh, that was, I sat there sweating, but I ended up getting the job eventually. And I, uh, and the rest is history for me, but that's, uh, I can relate to your uh, ex experience there. It's, it's unique because so many times in the end, what I found was, you know, the, the person doing the interview for me uh, or with me was not asking me to understand my knowledge point. It was really understanding how do I go about solving a problem? How do I go about understanding the workflow to get from A to B? So in my mind, yeah, I didn't know the answer and I didn't go about a way that made sense or I didn't get to the correct resolution. However, my process and my, my, my conversation was more so what he was looking for. Um, or at least that's what I told myself uh, years later. So <laughs> give us a little um, uh, elevator pitch for the, the CSP program. Um, you know, for those who don't know what that is and, and, um, and, and how your um, background has helped you be the, that person who is the go-to for uh uh, at, at Crestron for, for companies who specialize in uh, independent programming, if you will, and, and other services. Yeah, no, the, the CSP uh, community, the CSP program is a tighter community than I ever expected. Um, I knew of the Kate program, uh, which is the predecessor of the CSP. Uh, for those who don't know, CSP stands for Crestron Service Provider. Um, but when I stepped into this role and I, I was expecting to come in to a group of simple, sharp uh, 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 experts and people who knew the best of the best. And, you know, everybody was going to be on the same page and every conversation I was going to have was going to be that top tier conversation. And in the grand scheme of things, you know, that, that they are, are there. They are, are the top of the, the, the best of the best that can really um, take AV, our industry, to the next level. But the CSP program is so much more than programmers. Um, it's providers and it's it's service providers. So we have organizations that do uh, system design and, and consulting work to help end users understand the do's and don'ts of what they need in their, in their systems. We have people that are providing um, uh, trainings and service capabilities, driver development, extension development um, that never touch an Apple actual deployed application. They're just helping write modules and extensions that are incorporated into the system as a whole. So when I look at and you know as you as you said what is the you know what is the CSP elevator pitch um, the way I phrase it is the CSP is a group of experts that help can help you identify and maximize the end users expectations and usability on what they want to deploy in their structure and their ecosystems um, and it's this and it's a consistent experience it's not. Uh, um, one system design that came for this project and another system design and program from that project. They're really just there to help provide that consistent user experience from start to finish across the board. James, I, I know that in previous episode, um, which happened to be 132, uh, we had Mark Levecki on and, and you got um, a little bit of uh, a taste for what other independent programming companies do they stand for and how they, they might be um, beneficial. Um, what are your thoughts about that now after some time to let things sink in and, and, um, and, you know, how, how could somebody like Jeff help you in your role? So that's a, uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I'm still, I'll admit, I, I'm on the fence about that. Um, with outside company. And I, I really, I want to chop this up to is I'll admit I'm a control feet freak. I like to control things. Um, Go so figure. I want to have, <laughs> Oh yeah. I don't know. Couldn't figure that's why we control things programming wise. But um, so that's where my hesitation is. I, I, I do like third party uh, programming and having uh, like a manufacturer who can, you know, kind of step in and help, um, businesses and uh, especially higher ed, like you guys think of 
many schools do not have a team um, that they can devote the resources to writing code. Um, they're just trying to, you know, keep their head above water and get the day to day going. They can't really focus on programming and all that stuff. So have that resource there available to them, either by a manufacturer or third party, is definitely valuable. Um, I'm so on the fence about it myself personally, just because of I like to control things. And, you know, I, I would throw out there, I mean, I think you're spot on. It's important to have the manufacturer support in doing that. And the CSP program, there's a lot of uh, stipulations and requirements to be a CSP that ensures that if they are a CSP, they are there to support you and they're, they are qualified to do such. Um, the other thing I throw out there is I think you can maintain more control and more grasp of your solutions and partnering with a CSP because you're having the one-on-one -on -one conversation with the developer in that in that instance and between you two don't don't uh, uh, drown your time in having to do the development yourself leverage partners and leverage the CSP to help build that to your specifications and then update it maintain it upkeep it support it to your specifications um, and helping and support that. And not to say that other programmers that work through the integration channels aren't available there, and that's not the case either. That There are absolutely some that do. Um, this is just another way, another tool. You know, I mean, think of it, it, it's the crescent wrench instead of the screwdriver in the toolbox, right? This is just another way that you can help be successful. Um, and, you know, I'm, I want to be clear about that part. It's not one or the other. These These two work together. Um, and it, it's important to understand that as well. Yeah, I, I actually, I like the way you explained that and I, I, you know, not, not to kind of get into the, too much of the business side of things, but I, I kind of look at, um, CSPs as being specialists and, and, um, you, you use them when you need them for particular situations, or you have them help you to get to a point, um, they can be brought in as you need them, and you, but you could also use them as uh, consistency, as as you mentioned earlier, Jeff, from project to project. This way, you can work with different vendors and different integ integrators, especially in different locations, but yet have that consistent um, programming resource um, if if that's what the way you want to go with it. No, I, I think that you're spot on with it. So, so um, to give us a, a little bit of um, of insight as to what programmers should um, should expect from Crestron moving forward, and you know what 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 opportunities do you think um, not just CSPs but other programmers might have to um, to to either get into new technologies, um, be be um, challenged by new things. Uh, I think we we we've we've had discussions on the show about. The fact that we, the programmers don't want to become configurators. They want to still write code. They want to still be challenged and still be creative. Um, what, what, what would you do to inspire that? Uh, that that's actually a great question. Um, you know, when you look at the art industry as a whole, um, it's very easy. And I would say programmers, I, I'm equally as guilty in my time in integration. Um, we get complacent with understanding what works and just kind of we can get in this cycle of just repeat 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 and you know to your point it is it feels like a configurator right and it feels like that's what you can get into um i would say because of that um and i can speak from my own personal experience you know you mentioned it we're you know less than two full weeks away from infocom the, the doors opening on the show floor and it wasn't until I actually stepped away from programming that I went to my first Infocom show. And it was, and I did it as a member of Crestron. And it was insightful to me, um, not just as, as a Crestron employee and a technical director supporting our dealers at the time, but as a programmer, you know, taking the time and the opportunity to walk around the show floor and understand you know, there, there's technologies out there that I haven't even looked at. And there's, there's you know, tons of stuff in the Crestron ecosystem that, you know, people may not be aware of. 
but they're not aware of it, not necessarily because they're unwilling to, but because they've gotten stuck in this cycle of rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Um, I would say, you know, speaking to many programmers, um, you know, CSPs out there in the community, um, well, many of them are risk averse. They, they try to limit their, their risk that they put out there. However, to take our industry to the next step and what excites me, um, it is those next steps. It is, you know, how are we, uh, I've said this many a times, bringing back the automation. The last five years, we, we've lost the automation in a lot of our systems. We've lost the management controls because rooms, by definition, we're trying to get simplified. But in simplification, I think we've gone, you know, it's a pendulum. We've gone too far to the other side. We got to get back into the middle. Um, and that's where I'm excited because so much has changed in the past five to seven to 10 years in our industry. Um, whether it be hardware and, you know, a migration from a fixed frame architectural style um, distribution system internal to a room to now leveraging the network. I had a, I was on a conversation this week on a multi-thousand uh, uh, endpoint system um, that is, uh, it pushed my bounds of having a conversation on the network. Um, but that's where we're at, and that's what that's where I'm excited. And th you also take it to the new languages out there, you know, Crush Run migrating with our C Sharp support, HTML5 and CH5 support. Um, it's going to push programmers. They're going to have to be willing to step into a new mold. Um, if it's not the lead installer that gets pushed to PM, that gets pushed to starting to program and just think that's where it's at. It's now, no, we actually need to move into this next realm. Um, and the capabilities, they are endless. And, and that's that's what I enjoy having in those conversations that I enjoy uh, discussing, especially with the CSP community. James, I think uh, Jeff touched on a lot of good things there. You know, first is Infocom and, and trade shows. And we've talked about this before about um, if you you don't really see the world of AV until you go to one of these trade shows. Um, and we've also encouraged a lot of programmers to um, see if they can get approval for going or, or, or put, put, um, you know, put even put in some time off to, to go to the trade show. Uh, do, do you still think that that's the case um, in terms of um, how, where growth might happen? Oh, yes. Um, I mean, Jeff hit, Probably on our, oh, this is episode 166. I think in his little uh, uh, statement there, he hit all 165 episodes of <laughs> topics we covered. Um, <laughs> you know, yes, we talked about this before where um, it's valuable to be at trade shows. Yes, Infocom. Infocom's one of our biggest ones, the pro AV in the world. But I would also say just hit out the local uh, trade shows. I mean, I, I will give a uh, a biased opinion here. The Hetma Roadshows, they have been very valuable because they're local. They're small. They're one day, especially for programmers. The programmer can get there and, you know, talk with maybe their client, you know, the higher ed community, or, you know, talk to some of the manufacturers because they can't afford to go a whole week at Infocom um, I really feel Infocom is valuable. You need to get there um, one way or another, but don't just limit yourself to Infocom. Hit the uh, regional ones as well. I think that's a good point. Um, and and I, I like to what Jeff was saying in terms of, you, you know, you, you kind of get stuck in doing the same old routine and using the same products and, and rinse and repeat. And, and, you know, the, it, it you, with those blinders on, you don't necessarily see the world, rest of the world out there. It, you know, for me, I that, that's where I spend a lot of my time is is looking down the road and 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 trying to take in that bigger picture. But I don't, um, you know, it, it, I have to put myself in other shoes and realize that they're really working on what they need to do day to day. Um, oh yeah, we definitely we get in our blinders, and I I, I always use this statement whenever. I, I talk with people, programmer, it's just anybody. Uh, and they're like, well, we always done it this way. Great. Doesn't mean it's the best way. 
or the only way of doing things like, you know, branch out, learn from others um, and get out there. It's great that you always did this way and great that it worked for you. But, you know, you lock yourself into a box doing that. Let's push the envelope. I, I think I had the conversation with somebody yesterday and the, the, the statement kind of plays here as well is, you know, there is a wrong way to do something. But very rarely is there a 100% defined right way. There's multiple ways to do it right. And, you know, I look at Infocom, the people that sat there and, and trade shows in general, um, trainings, you know, it, it, you got to get out there. You got to keep going. And the moment you don't, um, you know, I, I could go down a whole conversation of AI, um, that AI is not going to be replacing us, but the people who don't actually use it are going to get replaced. And I think that's the same thing of making changes in your SOP from, hey, it is only the sales team, you know, or this team advocate for yourself as a programmer, as a programmer myself, I, I wish I knew back then stuff I know now and the things I, I saw, the people I met. I mean, gosh, the people you're out there having conversations with is almost as important. Oh, yeah, definitely building your network, building that community. And that kind of uh, reminds me, Jeff, is like, how often do us programmers actually look back and see how far we've grown? Um, I still, I have said this probably on this um, podcast multiple times, but my first uh, AV programming job I did, I probably six years after I did that, I had to make a modification and I actually pulled up the code and I looked at it. And I'm like, how is this working? This should not be working. Now it was working, but I was like, it's like, this should not be working. And I mean, cause I grown so much, but if we get into that rinse and repeat, you're not growing. And then 100%. you just get stuck where you are and you can't venture out and improve and uh, enhance what you do. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, to the programmers out there, I remember one of the in the crush on world, I started having conversations on cross points and, you know, there, there's two there's two camps with cross points. Uh, the camp that says the first rule about cross points is you don't talk about cross points. And then there's the second camp that they do everything with cross points. And, you know, I use that as an example because I migrated from one to the other. But I would say it wasn't until I was probably. 12 to 13 years into my career that I actually migrated, but the migration allowed me to grow. And if you ever look back, <laughs> I was afraid where you were going with that comma, James, because if you ever look back to a program you did six years ago and go, damn, I really knew what I was doing. Um, no, that should not be your statement at all. Because if you did, you're, you're, you, you've gone backwards. You should be moving yourself forwards every day, every program. I'm not saying you have to rewrite everything and start from scratch every time, but you should be evolving and moving forward, becoming more efficient. I think that's a good place for us to wrap this one because we will have Jay and Jeff back in the next episode. And I think that there's plenty of things we can continue this conversation about. Um, but it, it, until then, um, Jeff, how can people get in touch with you, learn more about Crestron, learn more about the CSP program? Absolutely. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me, um, you can reach out to cspinfo at crestron.com. Um, that's a joint email that I partner with uh, my partner in crime, Shelly Flynn. Uh, shout out for everybody who knows her. Um, uh, if you need to reach out, though, um, ping your TDs, ping, ping your, your Crestron reps, uh, as well, they know how to get a hold of me if you need to. But uh, CSP info at crushdown.com is the easiest way to reach out of regarding uh, to me and the CSP program. Excellent. And James, uh, how can people get in touch with you, learn what you're up to, and continue the conversation? Uh, you Google me, you'll find me. Um, I'm out there again on Twitter, X, whatever we're calling it these days as AV underscore James King. Um, LinkedIn, I'm out there. Um, not as active, but I'm out there. Um, anything with HEPMA, the Higher Ed Digital Magazine, where I write for the IT and AV column. Again, Google me, you'll find me. Fantastic. And what I uh, alluded to at the top of the show, um, Recently, the Ask the Programmer community has been established in a group on LinkedIn. So uh, please check that out. Um, about 
right after last Infocom, James put out a challenge and said, you know, we really need to find a place to congregate. And we've started that online and we look forward to uh, connecting with other programmers and listeners of the podcast in person. But um, check out this LinkedIn group. It, it's open for anybody to join and we're uh, sharing uh, questions and polls and comments and, and interesting stuff about programming. So uh, look for Ask the Programmer on LinkedIn. And then um, another uh, quick announcement, um, the, the Ask the Programmer podcast is now supported by Control Concepts, my company, where uh, uh, Control Concepts develops uh, building blocks and provides support for AB programmers. And we're looking to raise the bar and help um, programmers succeed through uh, API integrations and utility modules, and those can be all found at controlconcepts.net. Um, for me, uh, and, and if you'd like to uh, be a supporter of the show, please reach out to James and me. We'd like to have more organizations uh, be a part of this and, and shout outs to them. And uh, for me, you can reach me at Steve Greenblatt on social media um, and uh, look forward to being in touch and um, hearing more from our listeners. Um, our podcast can be found on YouTube in the video version and on your favorite podcast player for audio. Um, as we mentioned, Infocom is going to be days away from the release of this podcast. So please look for us there. Um, I, I know that I'll be at the tweet up. I believe that James will be as well on Wednesday. Um, so please uh, look for us there. We have some stickers to give out and so forth, but you can always connect with us online. And until next time, this has been Ask the Programmer.